Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Homestead and as I promised in my last video, I'm here today to share with you how you can harvest your amaranth plants. It's super fun, I find, uh, very rewarding and really easy. There's many ways to do it for one thing, so don't think that you can only do it the way I'm going to show you, which is with my own two hands basically. You can also do it many other ways. The key is to have a dry plant and to crush the flowers. So you can have them in a bag and step on them. You can kind of hit them with a broom. Uh, there's many ways you could do it, but I find that it's simplest to just do it with my hands. In any case, whatever way you do it, you will end up with so many seeds, and these seeds are so nutritious. They're full of protein for one thing, as well as fiber, calcium, vitamin A and C, and just a load of nutrients that are so great for your immune system, a great way to build up your health. You can use amaranth seeds in so many ways too, and we'll discuss that after we harvest some. So come with me and let's go get at it because I've really waited too long, and I know the birds have gotten a ton of my amaranth this year. And as I've mentioned before, and as I'll mention again in this video, I'm sure, huh, amaranth, this is a good thing really, but just so you know, amaranth is going to give you a ton of new volunteer plants next spring. So you don't ever have to really plant this plant again uh, unless you want to say take it to another area, but you could always transplant some because you're going to get dozens and dozens of fresh growth. So be careful where you harvest and, and do the winnowing of the shaft because a lot of the seeds will fall and grow you some new plants. Now, as I said, I did wait a little too long, so I've lost some of my seeds to the birds, but that's okay, I have plenty. Let's go get what's left. Now, this amaranth is uh, more than ready to harvest, and I'll show you how you know if it's ready to harvest for sure. One of the signs is that the leaves are starting to fade. Another sign is that the flowers are starting to have beige appear on them. You know, when they first start, they're a very dark maroon, but then they start to turn, as you can see they're doing here on the end. And you're starting to see some of the light color, and that's because those little tiny dark blossoms are opening up. And what happens when they fully open up is that the seeds will drop out all over the ground, and you will then have a ton of amaranth volunteering next year, or even this fall. I have a bunch coming up already this fall. Here in a part of my pathway that is desperately in need of more wood chips because you can see bare dirt there. That has given rise to literally lots and lots of amaranth coming up. And this amaranth also next to some uh, zinnias here and some oh very pretty mums that are starting to bloom. Okay back on track. This amaranth also past ready to harvest. I am still watering it but it's been alive since um, probably April, so it's just old. In fact, you can see where I have cut it back. This thing was about 10 feet tall. Now it's down at about three and a half, four feet, and uh, still plenty to harvest from it. Now, as I mentioned, I have been harvesting regularly over the course of the summer with the amaranth, but I thought today I would just show you how easy it is to do. So when you can shake the amaranth like this over your hand and you see all those little black things, those are seeds. And it's a little breezy out here today and every once in a while the breeze crosses my hand and it takes some of the pink blossom away. That's how easy it is to get rid of all the blossoms and just have seeds left. Gentle blowing takes care of that, whether by your own mouth or with a uh, very light fan. But these seeds are letting us know, yep, time to harvest these because if we don't they're all going to fall on the ground to grow volunteers and for the birds to eat and you know there's going to be plenty of bird food and volunteers even if you harvest now to harvest i'm just going to cut off each stalk um, in a manageable length each stalk that has a lot of flowers on it and then I'm going to put them somewhere to dry. Usually I put them in an old feed bag or but a paper bag would work great too because you want them to continue drying out. Um, that is what I have found works best although some people lay them in the sun. I found the birds to go after them if you do that. So yeah cut them off and put them in a bag to dry. 
somewhere warm where it's not going to rain, not going to gather dew, maybe in your home or maybe uh, on a covered patio, something like that. Now here's one such stalk that I've just cut off. Be aware though that wherever you're doing this, um, whenever you're transferring these things you're cutting, you wanna do it very gently because the more you move them, and especially the later you've left your harvest, um, the more seeds you're gonna lose in transport. Uh, so have your bag right there to put these into immediately so you'll lose as little seed as possible. All right, I have a bag full of amaranth. Wow, this stevia plant next to the amaranth is just blooming like crazy right now. It will die back over the winter usually because it doesn't like the cold, but then it will sprout up again in the spring. But I do need to go through and harvest all these stevia leaves before the dieback happens. So that's probably next on my list. Stevia is a great plant to grow and super easy as long as you find the right microclimate, which definitely needs more shade than most of my plants do here. All right, time to tackle this amaranth plant now. I will see you back here in a few minutes. Actually, it'll probably be this afternoon uh, to take some of the drier ones because this plant does have some pretty dry ones on it and show you how easy it is to get the seeds out and talk a little bit about what great things you can do with the seeds because there are two really fun, uh, rewarding uses you can have for them and uh, especially if you eat gluten-free. Now, what can you do with amaranth? How do you cook it? How do you use it? Well, you probably know, but just in case you don't, the leaves are great eating, very good for you, very healthy, and you can eat them all summer long. They're kind of, a, to me, a cross between, say, Swiss chard and um, a good spinach or kale. Uh, they work fabulous in stir fries, and they're so colorful. Just a really tasty plant, and you can Eat those as much as you want. They'll just keep growing more leaves and it doesn't have any effect on how much uh, it produces in the way of flowers and seeds. And when it comes to the seeds, what can you do with them? Well, one thing you can do with them that I've done a, a time or two, but it's not the usual thing I do, but it is um, kind of fun and that is to pop them. Yes, you can pop amaranth seeds like popcorn, but they're so tiny, as I'm sure you've now realized, um, that it produces a very small popped seed. And how do you do that? Well, you get your frying pan very hot before you put the seeds in. You don't add oil, you just put the seeds straight in and when about two thirds of the seeds have popped, you turn off the heat and remove the pan from the heat uh, because they'll you know, keep popping and you don't wanna burn them, okay? And they, they pop and cook very fast, so you don't want to leave that heat on. As Soon as you see two thirds are popped, turn the heat off and take them off. And there you've got your popped amaranth. And the second way you can use the amaranth seeds is to make a porridge, you know, like oatmeal or cream of wheat, that type of thing, a cooked morning cereal. Well, why am I saying morning? You can have it anytime you want. Uh, this is super easy to do. You cook it just like you would any cereal, right? Any grain. It isn't really a grain and we'll get back to that in just a second. So you'd cook this at about a ratio of one cup amaranth seeds to two cups water. And now you might be thinking that is a lot of amaranth. Yes, it is. And so I don't usually cook it this way. I have done so and it tastes, I find very good in a kind of a nutty way. It's sort of like cream of wheat, but much nuttier. And I like it that way, but it does take quite a bit. So if you're growing a lot of amaranth, like I plan to do in the future, this is definitely something you could take advantage of and do. It takes about 25 minutes of simmering um, for the seed to cook fully. And it's fabulous that way. What are some other things you can do that take less of an amount of the amaranth seeds? Well, one thing you can do is throw a handful in a stew. What does it do? It acts as a natural thickening agent, which is a really wonderful thing to have in the form of amaranth seeds because they're so nutritious. So they're not just thickening your stew or your soup, but they're also adding a whole boatload of nutrition to it. You can also just throw a handful of these seeds into your salads. I find it gives them a little bit of added crunch along with the nutrition. 
Another thing you can do with your amaranth seeds is to soak them for a while to soften them up and then bake with them. Put them in your banana bread or your pumpkin bread. Anything that you might throw in, say, flaxseed meal, well, you can throw in some amaranth seeds. Again, having soaked them to soften and open them up or you can do something else with them and throw them in your bread and that is to grind them up in, say, a coffee grinder, a nut grinder. And once ground, you have basically amaranth meal which you can use just the same way and in all the same recipes that you would use a flaxseed meal. Like flaxseed meal, amaranth meal makes a fabulous addition to smoothies. Lots of nutrition and that, that added bit of nuttiness. And that leads me to the thing that I like to do the most with amaranth seeds and that I intend to do a lot more in the future as I grow more bulk amaranth, and that is to make amaranth flour from them. Again, you would just take the seeds and grind them into flour in your coffee grinder or your small uh, food processor. I grind oats into flour all the time. I grind almonds into flour. Well, you can grind your amaranth seeds into amaranth flour. And it's a great addition, very nutritious, again I say, um, and gluten-free. And that brings me to the point I wanted to make about amaranth because amaranth is not a grain. It's considered one of the ancient grains and yet it's not a grain. It's very much like quinoa in that way. And so because it can be used like a grain, making cooked cereal for instance, or making a flour from it, it's sort of been classified that way, but it's really a seed and not a grain. Just a little trivia for you there. Now let's see how much amaranth seeds I've gotten from just winnowing out a few more handfuls of the flowers. This will not be my total amount by far. I've already been harvesting for, oh, the last six weeks or so. I just hadn't got around to these last two plants. Uh, but I'm just, for the purposes of this video, showing you a few of the flowers. But I think you'll be um, somewhat impressed with how much I get from just a few flowers. I know I was. So here is one of the amaranth flower stalks and you can simply rub it between your hands. Now, personally, I find this method works great, but it is a little prickly because the, these flower stalks have some kind of spiky stems on them or I don't know, something is poking me. So I usually wear gloves and I am not a garden glove person. I, I like never wear gloves. I know I should. It'd be better for my hands. As you do this, just throw away the large stems, any leaves that happen to be in there. But otherwise, you're just breaking up all of the um, flower clumps, okay? And what you're left with are the seeds and the blossom papers. But yeah, it's best really, ah, if you don't want to get poked and feel like you have stuff in you for a long time afterwards if you use gloves. But after the initial rub down of one stalk, you see a bunch of flowers, right? And you're like, where are the seeds? Oh, they're in there. And when I rubbed them, I saw them fall out. But one of the things about amaranth is that you do have to winnow it to get rid of all of the blossoms. And the winnowing might seem a little intimidating, it might seem like it's going to take a long time. Gloves on now. But in fact, winnowing is actually super easy. The blossoms and other shaft that are involved in amaranth harvesting are so lightweight compared to the seeds that you will have no problem at all getting rid of the shaft. And there's a few different ways you can do it. And one is simply by... Uh, blowing on it but when you blow the only thing that blows out is the blossoms and lightweight twigs the seeds though they're small are heavy so they stay behind now if like me you might tend to uh, hyperventilate you might want to use a fan for this part but it's super easy and I've just blown it a little bit and already got rid of most of the shaft and I'm left with a few clumps I hadn't broken so I'm breaking them now and now I'm gonna blow those. 
Now, I'm not convinced you don't lose some seed with this method. Some people swear you don't. I think you do lose a little seed, but my goodness, you're gonna have so much seed if you grow any amount at all that it doesn't matter. <laughs> Now with that little amount of blowing and with just those two small flowers, you can see how much black seed I have already gotten. An amazing amount for just two little flowers on uh, the stalks of which I have so many. All right, here are a few more flowers. I'd say I did five flowers in all and I've already got all of this. I'm going to now winnow this. Like I said, you can use a fan if you don't want to just blow it. Shake it again, blow it again. <laughs> yeah, if you tend to hyperventilate, definitely use a fan. But if you don't, this works, as you can see. We're getting more and more of the chaff out, and now you can see more and more just black seeds left. Now, that reminds me to mention that a lot of amaranth has golden seeds, not black seeds like this one, but they all taste pretty much exactly the same. They're all edible, they're all kind of nutty, and you can cook and eat all of them. Nearly all the chaff is gone now, but let me show you an easier way. Here are two tools you can use to help you with your amaranth winnowing. One is a very fine sieve over a bowl. Another is a flour sifter. Both of these work great, especially in the first, say, 90% of the process of winnowing and taking out um, a lot of the blossoms and twigs and things. Then for that last five to 10%, the blowing method with your mouth or a fan works great for the very, you know, end of getting rid of the very finest shaft. Now I recommend that you don't smush it down too much. You can use your hand to break it up a bit, but in my experimenting, I found that if I smushed it too much, it just gave me a lot more shaft and it didn't really add a lot more seeds. The seeds, if they're ready to come out, they're going to come out pretty easily just by your initial stripping the flowers off the stalk and then by shaking. So let's see how many seeds we've got in here just after doing this. Wow, look at that. Yes, there is some shaft, but mostly beautiful black shiny seeds. Here's that same seed spread out on a paper towel so you can see it a little bit better. There are a lot of seeds there. Very loud helicopter. A little wine in the garden in the evening really helps you relax. I don't even really care about the helicopter right now. Bye. It's probably a fire helicopter. They're always looking out for us. The thing is, is as we head into fall, which I insist we are doing because November is only a few days away, right? And we are scheduled to get our first rain in three days. Well, it's 73% likely. I say it's going to happen, <laughs> which means I need to harvest before that happens, right? Like my winter squashes. I'd like to get them off the vines before that happens. But where was I going? I got sidetracked. Oh yeah, as we head into fall, I really get into baking mode because I love to bake. I mean, I really, really love it. And I always have since I was a young girl. And since I've been growing my own veggies and fruits and now grains uh, and pseudo grains like amaranth, I just have more and more fun with baking. So fall and for that matter, uh, winter is just a great time of year for me. I have more free time because I don't have to be outside as much in the garden. So I can do more reading, which I love, and I can do more baking, which I love. And so, yeah, amaranth is definitely going to play a part in that this year. What's the weather like where you are? Has it been raining already for a long time? Are you just heading into summer now? Cause you're, you know, on the other side of the world for me. 
Or like me, are you in a very hot, dry climate that has yet to see its first rain? It's going to happen. I swear it's going to happen, guys. Maybe by the next time I put up a video, which is going to happen very soon because I want to do an end of October garden tour for you. I have actually a lot still in the garden growing and I have put off planting my fall stuff <laughs> like carrots and sprouting broccoli because my beds are still full of summer stuff. So I really do need to get them out. I know they could go on for another month, maybe even longer, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. So yeah, I have to do that. I can't do it tomorrow, but Monday morning, that's Halloween. Ooh. Okay. I'm not promising, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll wear a costume for the garden tour since it's Halloween. We'll see. You tune in and find out if Kim wears a costume on Halloween for the October 31st garden tour. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you learned something about amaranth today. I know I am learning more all the time. <laughs> if you grow amaranth and if you're harvesting and using some of it, let me know what you're doing. I would love to try any recipes that you guys try. I also see chaff and at least one amaranth seed in my wine. Good thing I was almost done with it.